Hi, welcome to Marker Board Videos. My name is Nancy Foote. Today's video, which is a video in our Math in Minutes series, is factoring quadratics but special cases. Well, I'm going to guess that your teacher probably doesn't tell you, hey, guess what? Today you're going to factor special cases or give you a list of special cases to uh, factor. So what we're going to work on today are two things. First of all, how do you recognize when you have a, a special case? And then how do you factor it? So the first problem we're going to do, and it's a relatively simple one, or it looks relatively simple at first, is 25n squared minus 1. Now you've not seen a problem like that before, so we're going to rewrite it so that it looks familiar. 25n squared plus 0n minus 1. Now that looks more like the expressions you're used to seeing where you have an n term in there. And because your lead coefficient isn't 1, you multiply these two together. Remember the sign stays with the number so that is a negative 1. 25 times negative 1 is negative 25. And what are my factors of negative 25? They're 1 and negative 25, negative 1 and 25, and 5 and negative 5. Now we're going to add these together, and if you don't know what I'm doing, go back and rewatch the video on solving quadratics when the lead coefficient is not equal to 1. There's a whole video on it, and you'll get really good at it really quickly. So 1 minus 25 is 24, and I'm trying to get 0 as my target, so that one's not going to work. 25 minus 1 is 24. That's not going to work. 5 minus 5 is 0. That works perfectly fine, so I'm going to use this up here. So I'm simply going to rewrite this again, minus 5n plus 5n, because that gives me 0, minus 1. I'm going to put it in two sets of parentheses, and I'm going to see what can I factor out of 25n squared minus 5n. And it seems to me that I can factor out a 5n. If I do, 25n squared becomes n, I'm sorry, it becomes 5n, and negative 5n becomes minus 1. So let's see, what could I factor out of anything here? Well, it's already got 5n minus 1, so why don't I just say plus 1? Remember when you do these, you have to factor something out of both sets of parentheses. Even if you're only factoring out a 1, you need to write that down or else you're going to get all messed up. So, two sets of parentheses like we do when we factor. This 5n goes here plus 1 goes here, this plus 1 goes right there, and then this is simply 5n minus 1, which is what we have right there. Okay? That took us a little bit of time. We got the right answer. Now, if you happen to notice that this was a special case, life would be much easier for you. So what do we look for a special case? We look to see if a and the absolute value of c are perfect squares. By perfect squares, I mean if you take a number and multiply it by itself, the answer you get is a perfect square. So 1 is a perfect square, 4 is, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 225. Those are all perfect squares. If you don't know your square numbers from 1 to 15, I would highly recommend that you spend some time and memorize it because it's going to make life so much easier for you in the math world. I see that this is a perfect square and this is the square root of 5. I see that this is a perfect square and there's a minus sign in there. That's critically important. So to factor it, I simply take the square root of 25 plus the square root of c and then the square root of 25 minus the square root of c and I'm done but it relies on you recognizing the fact that you have two perfect squares. So let's do another one. And I'm going to tell you this one is a special case. You may or may not know that when your teacher gives it to you as an assignment. So you want to know those special cases. You want to know those perfect squares. 1 is a perfect square. There's an invisible 1 right here. 25 is a perfect square. So again, let me make a little more room. That was a little small. So again, square root of 1 is 1p minus 5 and 1p plus 5 and I factored it in like 3 seconds instead of it taking me 3 minutes. Let's do another one. 9x squared minus 4. 9 is a perfect square, 4 is a perfect square, there's a, a minus sign in between. So I can do my two sets of parentheses 
3x, right? 3x times 3x is going to give me 9x squared. And I have minus 2 plus 2. 2 comes from the fact that it's a square root of 4. And that works, ladies and gentlemen, 100% of the time if you recognize your perfect squares. If you don't recognize your perfect squares, you're going to be having a little bit of a problem. It's going to take you longer. You will come out with the same answer if you put the plus 0 in and do your, your regular. But can you imagine this one? If you did this one using the traditional method, r squared plus 0n minus 25, do you know what you're finding the factors of? 49 times 25. That's going to be a nightmare. Better to recognize that 49 is a perfect square, 7 times 7. 25 is a perfect square, 5 times 5. And there's a negative sign in between them, so you're fine. So it's 7r minus 5, 7r plus 5. And just so you know, it doesn't matter which one comes first, as long as each set of parentheses, one has a minus and one has a plus. So here's another special case. Sometimes you're going to see something that looks like this. 4k squared minus 12k plus 9. And you're going to say to yourself, well, that's good. 9 is a perfect square and 4 is a perfect square. But what about this mess in the middle? And the answer is, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. If you take the square root of 4 and the square root of 9 and you put your lovely handy dandy little negative sign in between and square it, there's your answer. And if you don't believe that it works, go ahead and multiply it back out. 2k minus 3, 2k minus 3, 2 times 2, is 4k squared. Negative 3 times uh, 2k is negative 6k. Negative 2k times negative 3 is negative 6k. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. When you put this together, you get 4k squared minus 12k plus 9. It works every single time. So you don't even need to worry about that middle term. You just need to know that it's there. Here's another one. g squared plus 6g plus 9. Did you recognize the invisible 1 here is a perfect square? Did you recognize that 9 is a perfect square? Square root of 1 times g, square root of 1 times g, try that again, square root of 1 times g minus the square root of 9 which is 3 and that whole thing is squared and you're done. So with special cases, you can take this big, hairy, ugly problem that is supposed to take you five minutes to do, and you can do it in seconds instead. It really allows you to be significantly more efficient at factoring quadratics that are special cases. So let's look at this. Is this a special case? Well, 9 is 3 cubed. 49 is, I'm sorry, 3 squared. 49 is 7 squared. So we can say 3 times y minus square root of 49 is 7 squared, and I'm done. Let's do two more problems just to make sure you've really got it. 49d squared minus 70d plus 25. This is a perfect square. This is a perfect square. I can use my special problems rule. 7d minus 5, and that whole thing is squared. Last problem. I told you this wouldn't take long. The most important thing, and I'm going to say this again and again and again, is that you have memorized the square, perfect squares. You need to know, if you didn't know 64 was a perfect square, this would be a difficult problem. If you knew it was a perfect square, it suddenly turns into a simple problem. So the square root of 9u squared is 3u. It's always minus. The square root of 64 is 8, and that's squared, and you're done. And it doesn't get any harder than that. The hardest part on this is recognizing that this is a special case because you have to know your square numbers. If you have any questions on solving quadratics, well, we're not solving really, we're factoring quadratics with special cases, please send me an email and have a great day.